Most people don't have an exhibition commemorating their biggest achievement. For Dr. Marias Barnard, a museum stands in honor of just one of his. He recalls very humble beginnings. I left Beaufort West. I remember if it is yesterday when I walked down the little front passage, opened the gate with a little rucksack on my back with my earthly belongings at a tender age of 17 years and one month, hardly able to speak English, caught the train to Cape Town to start my medical career. And I was given a book by an English lady called Wonders of the World when I just started reading. And this book described all the wonders of the world. And in this little heart of mind of this little Karoo boy, who felt that he could hardly could see anything except drought, the desire grew and grew and grew and grew to see the world. I wanted to be a vascular surgeon, that was my desire, and I went to America to train as a vascular surgeon. The head of the department that ran vascular surgery refused to give me a job. He most likely thought I was better trained than him, but he had his reasons. I had a wife, three children, no money, no work, and so Chris, uh, against I think his better judgment, gave me work in his department as a cardiac surgeon. I never wanted to be a cardiac surgeon and I never wanted to work with Chris, but circumstances forced me into it. We had open warfare between the two of us. It came from our childhood already. And as we were there, I one day was at the right place at the right time the heart transplant. And immediately I got a position in the world. The heart transplant, of course, was an unbelievable defining moment in my life. Of course, it opened the world to me from a being insignificant junior cardiac surgeon, I immediately was recognized as a very important man in cardiac surgery. Despite saving many lives, Dr. Barnard realized that the cost of medical treatment was condemning many of his patients to a lifetime of financial ruin. Medical treatment is very expensive, yes it is, but surviving is more expensive. Today, people don't die as a result of heart attack, stroke and cancer, they survive. One of the heart transplant patients, I did not the first, it was the youngest at that stage. Uh, his name is Paul Thiessen. He was 14 years old. He's still alive today, more than 30 years. So people survive in years, but financially they get ill and they cripple. We give quantity of life to our patients, but not always quality. And for that, you de we develop the policy that pays out not on the diagnosis of death, not on the diagnosis of disability, but the diagnosis of the disease that will result in years later, expensive caring and looking after and then death. And this policy says, no, you don't need insurance because you're going to die and because you aren't able to need insurance because you're going to live. And I do know that uh, I'll be dead three, four hundred years already and somebody will be told you've had a heart attack or your wife has got a, has a stroke. And I will say, well, thank God I've had a critical policy that will give me the money. And I'm responsible for that. I can't think that we're responsible for our neighbors. I don't feel responsible for the man who's got no food, but I feel responsible for not helping him where I can. And I think that's the difference of a patient of an iron called Saul, which I wrote up in the Reader's Digest called A Piece of Bread. He died on the operating table. Before we operated on him, I had two operations, and I asked him what he wants, and he wrote on a little piece of paper, a piece of bread. So this little boy, in all his desire was not money or anything, a piece of bread. And when I had to find people to sign for a post-mortem, we discovered that him and his family lived in a derelict car somewhere under a tree. That was where he lived. And when I finally, in the theater, realized that he was dead, I walked out and I thought, we gave him everything that modern medicine can give him. We gave him valves, we gave him treatment, the best to our ability but we failed him completely because we didn't give him a piece of bread. And to me, it's important that all over South Africa, everybody is begging for a piece of bread, but we don't give it because we're too selfish living our own life. And this, I feel, is a, a, a problem in modern life, that we don't hear the call for a piece of bread. Dr. Barnard continues to live his life loving his neighbor, experiencing the truth that it's more blessed to give than to receive. Hello, doctor.